It's the Cube, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, Dave Vellante. We're back. Welcome to San Francisco. We're at Moscone Center in Moscone North. This is the Cube. The Cube goes out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. This is our sixth year at VMworld. Jake Shitness is here. He's the director of mobility and end user solutions at EMC. Jay, welcome to the Cube. Hey, good to have you. So, end user computing. I thought you guys were all about big iron. Let's go. Let's well, that's, go. A, that's a great point. So, um, I think one of the biggest things that we've been that we've been worrying about is really how do we address end users and some of the the common problems that you know IT shops have had around deploying virtual desktops. So what we've done, as you've probably noticed in the announcement that we made yesterday, um, we've taken a federation view of, of attacking the problem, an end-to-end -end view, which really comprises of, uh, as you can imagine, you know, really from, from the storage stack all the way through infrastructure and then all the way through to the application delivery, monitoring. And then what we did is we really wrapped it around with services, with professional services, and then also with single call support. So it's a really comprehensive solution. It's been validated across our, our, uh, our infrastructure, and uh, we've just received some really positive feedback on it. So like what? I mean, talk a little bit more about the announcement, the sure. feedback that you're getting. You know, we saw some, we saw Sanjay Poonin today. Of course. Uh, you know, up on the stage with Microsoft, which was kind of cool. But uh, what's been the reaction to the announcement? And so it's been great. I mean, I think that, you know, if you just take a step back and you start thinking about just um, end user computing and when you start to think about what's really been plaguing IT, right, is there's a couple of things. One is how do I deploy consistently an image or a set of desktops? How do I start small and grow, right? How do I monitor the entire end user experience from from being able to say, hey, you're having, you're having some problems, you're having some issues because you might be on a network where, where the bandwidth is just terrible. And so it has really nothing to do with, uh, with the ability of, of that actual virtual desktop, right? The other part is, is really being able to have a set of applications, being able to deliver those in a consistent manner. IT shops really get burned and burdened by a lot of time being spent on generating those images, making sure that there's interoperability, and then making sure that those um, get delivered ex you know, extensively back into end users. So what is the, is there an end user computing stack? You know, we love to talk about of stacks course, yeah. because it helps us sort of create a mental model sure. of the components. What's the stack look like for So you here, I'll give you a great, uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of what our stack looks like. So today, our stack really consists of, um, like I said on the, uh, on the infrastructure side. On the storage side, what we've done is we've optimized the solution around uh, a couple key areas. One is um, performance is obviously a big thing, right? Especially when you look at VDI deployments, uh, typically storage has been a bottleneck. Well, with our Extreme IO product line, what we've done is we've taken that and we've implemented that as part of the OS images and so forth. Right? So that helps significantly around performance. Um, and then what we've also done is not really, you know, what we've done is we've really taken a holistic view of this. And so what I mean by that is um, typically end user data, right, is a big thing for us. So if you want, if you've got a desktop and all you've got is an image and it's a pain for you to be able to get to your end user data, you're probably not going to use that virtual desktop. So what we've done is we've got VNX and Isilon uh, as part of that storage mix for the end user file share data. And then what we've done on top of that is um, really built out a level of choice. And so what I mean by that is on the infrastructure side, obviously there's a converged infrastructure with vBlock, but if you choose to do it on your own, we can help support with that, uh, we can help support that too. And if you choose to deploy that with an underlying enterprise hybrid cloud infrastructure, um, then the value just becomes a lot more. Now, you don't have to. Sometimes customers have said, have said to us, you know, that, that, uh, that environment, um, we've already got a cloud environment in, of our own that we really want to uh, integrate this into. That's fine. So what we really wanted to do was, once again, choice. Um, when you go up the stack, there's the ability to th do things like uh, deliver applications consistently. Uh, be able to monitor that end user experience. So with the VMware stack, what we've done is we've taken the Horizon Enterprise Suite and, and added that on top of that infrastructure that I just mentioned. And then when you power that together, right, when you bundle all, when you, when you look at how do I combine all that, 
there's a set of installation services that goes with it, and then also single call support for, for your EUC environment. Okay, so let me make sure I understood that. Sure. Jay. So I got, I got my choice of infrastructure, I got a mix of Flash, VNX, I got, I got the file level stuff, so the, yep. so the scale out file, global file system of Isilon. If I want to go compute, converged infrastructure, I can do that with, with a, with a vBlock. Absolutely. And then you've got management layer, so the sort of application monitoring piece Exactly. Top, and then sets of services, uh, and then that comprises the solution. Right, and then there's a catalog that, that end users can go to, right, with, uh, with some of the vRealize suite with, uh, that end users can go to and be able to um, deploy a desktop on their own. The other thing that we did, right, which was really interesting because you know, our, our level of expectation today, um, just based on where we're at, our level of expectation is really being able to get something in a self-service manner, I, you know, on the iTunes or an app store or whatever. So what we've done is through that catalog, I can go in and request a desktop for myself. I can go and add in my own custom apps into there, and then those things follow me based on, based on wherever I am. So talk more about that, that catalog. I mean, how does that get constructed? What are my options there? Sure. You know, what's in it? So what we did is we, we created, um, um, so this is part of the vRealize uh, suite, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we really looked at what are some of the most common tasks associated with building out uh, virtual desktops, tearing them down, do we recycle them? How do I reallocate some of those? How do I create that in unique experience for that user who then has a much more positive experience and says, yeah, I get it. This is this is exactly what I want. I want something that I can that I can have uh, an experience where I've got access to my data, I've got access to across devices, and then I've got the ability to be able to access all, all the all the sort of uh, content that I really need. Right. So it's a management stack. It's a there's a proactive monitoring capabilities in there, and what we've done is there's 13 workflows for IT, um, uh, which is what I just kind of described to you. Right. So. Um, what we've done is uh, taken some of those 13 workflows and we've just really hit home for, made it really simple for IT um, to start small, grow. So I, I'm going to ask, like, how hard is it to build that kind of end-to-end -end sure. solution? Sure. Um, maybe take us through the before and after. Absolutely, so, so if you, I'll, I'll put it in two lenses, right? One is the first lens is really uh, from, an end user, from an end user perspective. Mm. Typically, an end user would experience you know, days, sometimes weeks, now this is coming down, and I can go literally go to a catalog, click, 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 and I've got a I've got a virtual desktop deployed, and then I can customize that to whatever I need, right? So we don't necessarily presume that you and I have the same set of applications. So you might want to add some of your own. That's great. Um, from an IT standpoint, what we've done is we've really automated and streamlined that entire process of being able to um, define the desktop, define the image, define the applications and then be able to deliver those consistently. I mean, if you think about patches and patch management, that's such a huge issue. Um, we've really streamlined a lot of that. Now, help me understand sort of the organizational nuances sure. associated with, like, who do you even sell to? Is it the, you know, the, the desktop people, the end user computing people, the, the network people, <laughs> the storage question. people? How does that all shake out? And how are organizations changing? Let's start with the, the, the first question. I think there's, uh, that's a, I think that's, you're, you're hitting on something, right? I mean, I th these things are morphing and they're blending so much that we don't see a classic fire being a storage fire, right? Especially as we start to talk about, uh, as this is a federation solution, what ends up happening is we tend to have a discussion more around, what does your, your app story look like? What, is the, what does the internal apps look like? Uh, I heard you say earlier, you know, some of these custom apps are have been sitting around in, in these environments for years, mm. 10, 15, 20 years. How, we, take a, we take a holistic view of that, and then what we tend to do is, um, this is not a, hey, let me tell you about all the speeds and feeds associated with my storage infrastructure. This is a truly transformation sort of approach, where what we've really tried to do is optimize the experience both on the IT side, and then also on the, uh, on the end user side. So it's not really something where um, I'm going to sell to only the, um, the infrastructure person, right? We're really as looking at this more of a, what you tend to see is much more of a CTO mobility sort of a story um, that customers are gravitating towards. Okay, and so the, bi the, the business proposition to that individual is, look, you've got this challenge, you've sure. got this vision of what you want to deliver, the business value for your organization. We've got an infrastructure component that we can deliver to support that business objective. Exactly. Okay, and so, how do you go to market? Is it a direct sales model? Mm -hmm. Is it sort of partners, both? 
So it, it is both. Um, obviously, extensively partnering with VMware, and you know, as part of the federation, we're going to market that uh, um, together. But we also see a significant opportunity where where we jointly go after customers who are who really have the pain point of being able to say, uh, I think I see an opportunity where uh, typically there's a desktop silo, and then those customers then tend to think about how do I then if I'm going to build out that infrastructure, is there another are there other sets of applications or other workloads that I can put on top of that infrastructure? And so what they're doing is we're starting to see more desktop and applications, those groups becoming much more closer together. Um, I'll give you an example of eHealth. I know you're, you're, you know, eHealth is a great example of a customer. eHealth is, um, uh, just to kind of level set, eHealth is an out, is a, um, uh, they provide managed services and, and they provide IT infrastructure for, can, uh, for some of the hospitals in Saskatchewan in Canada. And what they've done is they realized that when they started looking at end user computing at the Federation AUC offering, they said, hey, look, we really see an opportunity here to consolidate our infrastructure, bring those apps much more closely together so that those end users that are, whoever, whether they be doctors, nurses, whomever, when they're logging into their desktops, they get a much more seamless experience because they're not just looking at the desktop, they're also looking at other applications. So, you know, the, the challenge with sort of the old VDI was you, sure. the experience, you, you know, it wasn't ever the same, right? But so we're, we're through that now. I but think now, so. But the key you're talking about that's interesting to me is the self-service component of it, that, that consumer experience. And I'm hearing you've achieved that. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the, that's, that's the really exciting thing about this, mm -hmm. right? And that's what customers are telling us is, is really innovative because what we're, what we're really solving for are two key, uh, you know, two key audiences, like I said, IT and end users. And as you know, if an end user doesn't realize, when in that, little, in that POC, when we see typically a small POC, a couple hundred users, right? If you, if you don't put your best foot forward there, it's never going to scale. It's never going to catch on to the broader, uh, to the broader community. So, what we, so we wanted to make sure that we optimize that experience and then give the IT staff an ability to start small and then grow quickly to thousands of users. So, examples, you know, sure. you mentioned eHealth, um, sort of types of companies that are doing this. Um, maybe, you know, give us some examples of successes, you know, the metrics that you've seen. Sure. Um, so types of companies that we're seeing um, really vary across the board. There's not necessarily a specific vertical. Um, we have seen a lot of in, uh, interest from healthcare, from financial services companies, but it's not necessarily intended to be a, virtu uh, a vertically oriented solution. It really does solve a much more horizontal uh, uh, set of offerings. But the, right? but the regulated industries are going to gravitate to it more, right? I think that's exactly sort of, right. You know, I want that, that level of control. In terms of the solution, What's you know what's the what was the sort of history of it? I mean, sure. When did you actually have this thing baked to so go to market? How long did it take to kind of put together? Maybe talk about the sure, sure. It, it, this has been a this has been um, one of the, one of the things that we really wanted to do, as I kind of mentioned, was we really wanted to make sure that this was built based on choice, right? And so, um, if there was some semblance of uh, if if customers really wanted to be able to have the flexibility in deploying in their own cloud environment, that's great. If they wanted to be able to deploy it with a with a Federation e EHC, great. Um, uh, this has taken months <laughs> to develop. Um, the, what we've seen and what we've done is we've incorporated customer feedback into the process as we were building the solution, as we were validating it, and, then, and frankly, it's just been, it's been awesome. It's been great, and we're seeing a lot of really positive reactions from customers. So, um, in terms of you know, what a solution is sure. inside EMC, I know you guys have a a solutions group. Sure. Um, you've taken, I mean, it used to be the old kind of, you know, white paper was the solutions right, group, right? right? They really stepped it up. But I wonder if you could talk about, mm. so it, it, you know, the solutions is one of those words that's really overused in our it industry. Is. So talk about what a solution is to, sure. to you guys. Sure, so in this context, it's really, it's a culmination of hardware, software, services, so installation services all wrapped around with support. Um, what that really means is it's an ability, which in this case, it's a validated architecture. Um, we've validated that entire stack. And what we've done is we've created some um, uh, building block approach, right? So if you want to start with a 200, uh, 200 user uh, implementation, great, you can do that. You can quickly scale that out. And by the way, not every desktop looks the same, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a small, medium, and large sort of yes. variant on that. How do, we, how do we accommodate for that? How do we accommodate for the various application stacks? So that's really, so what we really wanted to do was make something that was modular, you know, 
got the choice, but then it's it's validated and it's uh, and delivered and supported okay, by. Okay, so EMC I'm sitting and down with my EMC sales rep, and you know we're doing our account review, whatever sure. annual review, and tells me about this solution. I said, this looks really interesting. Let me get back to you. I go talk to my folks in my organization. Hey, let's do this. We do some you know tire kicking. We fly out to the you know EBC. <laughs> okay, we like what we hear. Hey, let's do a deal. Great. We sign a deal. What happens next? How does it all sort of get adopted, installed, adopted, absorbed sure. into my organization, training, et cetera? So it's a joint effort. Um, it's a joint effort and it's typically services led. Uh, and so what we do is we, there's an assessment, there's an assessment in terms of what's, what's actually in the environment. What do you want to change? What, what, is the, what is the application catalog and what does the application mix look like today? So it might start there with a little POC? Or it would definitely start and, with and a POC. So that's a, is, is that a loss leader? Is it maybe a small four-pay engagement? How does that work? Depends, so what, I guess, right? It, it just uh, it yeah. obviously depends, right? Exactly. And it, what we've seen is, you know, really c enterprise customers who are really taking, who've really taken to this, right? Um, let me go back to my example with eHealth. They were looking at um, deploying some additional hospitals, mm -hmm. um, and so what? One of the things that they really wanted to do was be able to scale from 6,000 users. Uh, all the way to 12 to 18,000 users. And, and they didn't obviously didn't want to do that in one shot, so that was over 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. Then they needed that ability to start that POC, understand it, understand what, what are some of the things that they need to do in their environment, and then, uh, and then roll that out. Okay, and then so services led, uh, essentially the infrastructure gets installed, and great, now I've got this capability, and I presume you've got some training and Absolutely. knowledge transfer that occurs, and typically, I mean, I know this, no one answer, but what should I expect if I'm a, let's say I'm a medium to large company I mean, in terms of, let's say, let's say you get small, medium, large, let's say I've got medium. How long before I'm actually able to get up and running? Um, obviously, Dave, that's going to vary. And so what we've noticed is uh, some, some instances it varies by as much as, uh, you know, a lot of the pre-planning, the more planning that you do up front really helps to accelerate that timeline. So, yeah, so it could be weeks, yeah, it could be well, months. It could be months, it could be years if I don't do the right pre-planning. Well, well, I don't think it'll be years. Well, but, but if, yeah. the, if the customer's not ready, the customer's not ready. I guess exactly. That's my point. Right. So assuming the customer's ready, they've done that pre-planning, sure. they figure out their application portfolio, they got their processes down, they're ready to go, they're chomping at the bit. Are we talking days, weeks, months? Weeks. Weeks yeah. to get this in. It's great, it's yeah. absolutely, yeah. It's and great. then once it's in, now I'm adding well, new once it's in, capabilities. Well, you're adding new quickly. capabilities. You're adding new functionality back into. You're adding additional applications. You're looking at that entire experience for that end user, and then you're able to diagnose and say, Hey, you know, sometimes some of these users are having an issue. Well, let me go and figure out how to proactively go and figure that. And, or how I'm to able to add, up, add new users instantaneously. Add new users exactly. Deliver apps instantaneously. Deliver application updates instantaneously. That's All right, last question. Sort of yes, give us the bumper sticker on VMworld 2015 from your perspective. You know, how would you summarize the the event. It's been great. Uh, we've, we've seen, as you can imagine, we've seen a lot of traction in terms of uh, um, interest in the solution. We've got uh, quite a few uh, sessions. We've got uh, some customers who are speaking on our behalf. Um, we really think of this as a this is a great opportunity, and frankly, it's a great opportunity that really demonstrates the portfolio of Federation solutions. Um, so we're really excited about it, and we can't wait to can't wait to share it with the rest of the world. Federation alive and well. There you, you go. Know, bringing strategic advantage to, to EMC and to customers. Jay Chitness, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's great Thank to you. see you. Good seeing right, you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Moscone. Right back.